All right, thanks for attending the webinar on seed storage. My name is Aaron Burmeister. I've got a number of responsibilities related to the inventory of stored seeds in the Seed Savers Exchange Preservation Collection. My job consists mainly of putting seeds into storage and taking them out of storage. Anytime we take seeds out of their storage locations for eventual use somewhere off the farm campus, we call that a distribution. That's a word I might be using later. But I also take seeds out of storage for our own uses right here at the farm. Another thing I do is to guide seed donations to the collection through the process from donation to accession. Today we'll be discussing seed storage things you may want to consider after you've harvested and processed your seeds in order to maintain their viability until you plant them. As we go through this presentation, feel free to ask questions by typing them in the Q&A box in the bottom right of your screen. I hope we'll also have time for questions at the end of the presentation. And I don't want to uh, presume that I'm the expert on all of this, so you, you might have some good suggestions, so feel free to type in suggestions too. The mission of Seed Savers Exchange is to conserve and promote America's culturally diverse but endangered food crop heritage for future generations by collecting, growing, and sharing heirloom seeds and plants. Our seed collection comprises thousands of varieties of vegetable crops. We'd prefer to grow out varieties in our collection as infrequently as possible. Thus, we have a need for long-term seed storage. Our storage facilities and systems fit our particular needs. Most gardeners have much different needs and don't require the same storage setup. Our seed vault maintains a temperature of about zero degrees Fahrenheit and seed moisture content of seed going into storage is between five and eight percent. We'll talk a little bit more about seed moisture content later. And seeds of most temperate climate vegetable crops at this range of moisture content can remain viable for a number of decades even when stored under these conditions. Our seed storage systems require significant amounts of human work hours and electrical energy to operate and to maintain. Let's discuss what might be practical and useful for your seed saving at home. Most gardeners cannot maintain the type of seed storage systems we have at Heritage Farm, nor do they need to, actually. My guess is that most seed savers do not need to store seeds for periods greater than five years. Seed storage for the average home gardener who saves seeds only requires a box and a cupboard or a cupboard in a cool, dry area and some type of more or less airtight containers. Clear labeling and good record keeping are also essential components of an effective storage system. Seeds can be remarkably hardy. Some will last for years with no particular attention paid to them, but an increase in vigor and longevity can be gained through proper storage. Good seed storage manages three parameters to improve the likelihood that seeds will sprout when they're planted, moisture, temperature, and protection. We'll discuss how these three parameters can affect seeds in storage, but let's first define the parts of a seed we'll be talking about. Seeds are tiny embryonic plants with a food source contained within a protective coat. This photo uses a common bean to illustrate these parts. On the left, the seed coat is visible. The seed coat provides protection. On the right, the inside of the seed is visible. The embryo will eventually grow into the bean plant. The food source provides energy for the embryo to survive storage and eventually sprout. In beans and many other garden crops, that energy is stored in the cotyledons. Many of the following slides will use this illustrated diagram to show processes within the seed. The first parameter that we want to consider is protection. Seeds can be damaged by bugs, rodents, humans, mold, fungus, or disease while they're in storage. If a mouse takes a bite out of this bean, for example, it can damage the food source or the embryonic plant inside so that it will not sprout. 
Rodent and insect pest damage is a particular concern for beans, peas, corn, squash, and grains. Seeds should not be stored in areas that are easily accessible to pests. Placing seeds in areas that you visit frequently allows you to keep an eye on them. Seeds can be kept inside glass jars, metal containers, or wire mesh to further protect them from insect and rodent pests. That second parameter that we need to manage is moisture. When a seed achieves a particular moisture content, the embryonic plant swells and the seedling emerges from the seed coat. After sprouting, the food reserve within the seed is typically exhausted. The seedling needs to find external sources for nutrients and energy. Most often these sources are soil and sun. When storing seeds, it is important to keep their moisture content low to prevent sprouting. The best way to do this is to store dry seed in a water impermeable container. Most containers with water barriers also have some degree of resistance to air exchange. This helps protect seeds from any increase in humidity. In this photo, a woman removes seeds from their plastic storage containers for the purpose of germination testing at the International Center for Agricultural Research in Dry Areas in Syria. Canning jars or other jars with sealing gasket type compounds in their lids also work well. Now, if your seed storage need is limited to terms of five years or less, test a number of potential storage locations in your house using a combination thermometer humidity monitor. Leave the monitor in one place over an extended period you can see the one we left here in the fridge. We didn't leave long enough. It's still reading just 68 degrees. So uh, leave it in one place over an extended period and check it at intervals to see what variation there is in temperature and humidity over time. Not all refrigerators are created equal, but we are showing a refrigerator as one option to explore. Some maintain acceptable and relatively even levels of temperature and hum humidity for seed storage. If you find that a basement or attic room is a drier and more favorable environment, be sure to also consider how the conditions there may change over the seasons. Airtight containers are best even for these types of environments because they further lessen temperature and humidity changes in the storage environment. If you have needs for long-term seed storage, it is even more critical to assess the seed from the standpoint of moisture content before it goes into storage. Sufficiently low moisture content can be crudely assessed by a seed snapping rather than bending under stress, or shattering rather than smashing. Note the differences in this photo. The dry pea seeds have shattered while the wet pea smushed. The dry squash seed snapped cleanly while the wet one bent. If your seeds do not appear to be sufficiently dry, you may use a method for drying them described by Suzanne Ashworth in her, her book Seed to Seed. In this method, seeds and color indicating silica gel beads are placed into an airtight container together. The beads not only draw moisture out of the seeds, but change color as they do so. Each product will tell you what color the beads should turn to indicate that they have absorbed their maximum capacity. This usually takes only about a week. Place the dried seeds in an airtight container, and they are ready for long-term storage at freezer temperatures. It is important to reduce the moisture content in seeds to very low levels for long-term storage because freezing seeds that contain too much moisture can kill them. The water inside the plant cell expands and ruptures the cell walls. We've already begun to discuss the third parameter, temperature, and its impact on successful seed storage. The embryonic plant inside a seed relies on stored food reserves until it can obtain food from the soil. When the food supply runs out, the embryonic plant dies. Cool temperatures, 
slow the metabolism of the embryonic plant so that it consumes its stored food more slowly, the food source lasts longer, and the seed's longevity is improved. Frequent changes in temperature can be detrimental to a seed's longevity. Most modern combination refrigerator-freezer units are frost-free, or have an auto-defrost function. This feature relies on a system of relatively wide cycles in air temperature, making the refrigerator-freezer a less-than-ideal storage environment. Now, in contrast, most chest freezers are manual defrost, which means that the temperature in the freezer remains more constant. This makes many chest freezers an ideal long-term storage environment for your seed. Even if you provide the best possible storage environment for your seeds, you may still want to be aware that seeds of certain plant types have a tendency to live longer than others. But these differences aren't usually a matter of concern for the average home gardener and seed saver who might only need to store seed for around five years at most. If seed is stored at basic temperature humidity levels appropriate for seed storage, and maybe we can um, say something about that now, there's this uh, informal rule there out, out there about a sum of 100 so if you're considering a seed storage environment, uh, a basic requirement is that the sum of the temperature in Fahrenheit and the relative humidity, the sum of those two numbers, should not be more than 100. If it is more than 100, it's just an inappropriate uh, environment for seed, seed storage. But that's, that's a basic uh, short of, sort of short-term storage environment. So if seed is stored at basic temperature humidity levels appropriate for, for seed storage, the amount of difference between the viability of tomato and bean seeds, for instance, over five years is not significant. If you're storing seeds under conditions that are closer to ideal for long-term storage, then the differences may be measured in decades, but these differences don't become apparent until some point in time after the seed saver is no longer physically able to garden and save seeds. Documentation is an important element of effective and useful seed storage. Write all the important information on the outside of each storage packet before placing the seeds in it. If your handwriting is legibility challenged, you might consider printing adhesive labels. At a minimum, each packet should have the plant type the particular variety name, and the year those seeds were harvested. Somewhere in your records, you should also have a record of when and from whom you first obtained your start for the particular variety, and contact information for that seed source. Here at Heritage Farm, each seed storage packet has quite a bit of data connected with it. We record a number of different identifiers at different levels of categorization. We also record the total mass as well as the 100 seed weight of the packet's contents. The packet also has a germination rate figure connected to it. The data also tells us where the seed was grown and in what year, and each of these different identification elements and quantitative measures also connects to other tables of data where even more can be known about the lot's grow out and even its source history. If you have a large collection of seeds but do not have a database like ours to identify the characteristics and source details for each variety, you might write something sufficient to identify the variety accurately and which you can use to refer to a notebook, file folder, or spreadsheet where you keep more detailed information on all your saved seeds. Or, if you prefer to keep all the information for each variety right with the seeds, you can make a larger label and print small or use a small font to record it all right on the label. That actually concludes our webinar this evening. Thanks again so much for attending. I hope it's been fun for you and interesting for you. Um, please join us in the future for future webinars. Thanks again for attending.